والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم Bismillah alhamdulillah and welcome to this episode of Beauties of Islam. I'm your host Yusuf Estes and in today's episode I want to talk about one of the beauties that is seldom really discussed. Often people that don't know anything about Islam, they will scratch their head and say, "I didn't know you had that in Islam." But I wanted to talk about this one particularly because it means so much to me personally. You know, when I think about this word love and i think about islam i see how it perfectly fits together it is so absolute so beautiful when you think about how love and islam work together many times people hear things about islam and hear about muslims and they think that there's nothing in islam about love but actually one of the names of almighty allah is alwadud Now what does al-wadud mean? It doesn't just mean love. You know the Christians, I was a Christian preacher for some time, you know. And there's this idea of God is love. God is love. You've heard that probably. But al-wadud is ongoing. Let me explain. It means that Allah is the loving. It's continual. And it's perpetual. it's always and it's everywhere allah's love is everywhere and this is awadud when i first ran across this in the quran i said oh this is nice and then when i began to study the word and how do, how does it fit and what does it mean i was astonished because all of the names and attributes and characteristics of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of god almighty they are the imperative they are the continuing always of allah he is the epitome of each one of his characteristics and when we say love that's nice but when you say love in all loving always loving and this is allah The characteristics of Allah are not limited and separated by themselves. Actually, they all work together and you can see them all at the same time in the way that Allah manifests so many things in the creation. You might be surprised to find that when we talk about Allah's love that it extends into his other characteristics like his mercy, his rahma, and then his rahim, and this is specifically merciful. we're going to be talking about this one in some of our other programs but when we talk about this aspect of al-wadud it also goes into another area called hidayah or huda and allah is al-hadi hadi is meaning the guide and he guides with his love as he guides with his rahma his mercy as he guides with his patience his sabr you might call it But subhanallah it's so amazing how Allah does all of these things at the same time. It's not just like somebody would take your hand and guide you down the street, maybe just kind of pull you along, and that would be somebody guiding you. But Allah is guiding with his love, guiding with his mercy. So you can twist it the other way and say he's also loving with his guidance. So all of these are interacting and going together. And the more I thought about it the more I realized that this could only be from Allah because you and I we can't even think in terms like this this goes beyond our depths of imagination when we talk about love in Islam often we hear about things that Allah doesn't love Allah doesn't love that's the expression from the Arabic but there are many things that Allah does love he loves for instance the believers He even loves the one who sins if the person will come back to him, repent to him and ask him for forgiveness. In fact, when Allah created all of us, 
He knew from the beginning that we would sin. And He didn't create us to be angels. He created us to be human beings. Angels never sin. Human beings sin all the time. So what makes us good? The fact that we come back to Allah to repent. When we stop the sinning and we go to Him and we're sincere, we ask Him to forgive us and we beg for His mercy. And then He forgives. He forgives and extends again this love. Al-Wadud. Did you know that when Muslims greet each other, they greet each other with the term Salam Alaikum? Did you know that? Which means peace be unto you. And then when they leave, they also say again the same thing. Salam Alaikum. But in between that, Sometimes you'll hear a Muslim say to another Muslim something like, Anahibbufillah. What is that? Ahibbufillah. What is that? Hibba. The hibba means this love. But to love for the sake of Allah is an amazing thing. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was talking to one of his companions. The companion said to him that he loves so and so. I love so and so for the sake of Allah. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, you go and tell him. You need to go and tell him. So he did. And then the response comes back, and may Allah love you. May Allah love you. May the one you love me, love you for the same reason. What a beautiful thing. What a nice teaching in Islam. Imagine that, if you will. That somebody's coming to you with this love, and they love you for Allah. Now you might say, well... Yeah, there's a lot of people, I love my mother, I love my father, I love my job, I love, uh, you know, driving around in the countryside. Many things that we love, but this is not the same. This is a love for Allah. I love this for the sake of Allah. If a man tells a woman, I love you, he doesn't say, I love you for Allah. He loves her for another reason. It's his wife, he wants to, you know, have his wife with him, be with her, everything. Yeah, sure, and that's an emotion. But this kind of love goes way beyond and transcends the love that a human has for another human. This is way beyond that. Because when the companions of Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, when they loved each other for the sake of Allah, it meant that was going to be over and above any other feelings they might have had. Obviously, there are a lot of people out there today that you could look at and say, well, I have to work with this guy, but I don't have to love him. I have to put up with this lady over here, but I don't have to love her. And I, I don't, you know, but wait a minute. When you say you love for Allah, this means that in spite of your other feelings, you'll put those out of the way. Oh, this guy gets on your nerves. He talks too much. Talk, talk, talk. And this one over here, he, he bothers me because, you know what, he's always late. And this one over here, you know, he always eats garlic. And uh, garlic, you're not supposed to be, be uh, you know. But still, when you really love somebody for the sake of Allah, those things don't matter to you anymore. What matters to you is that you want to love them for the sake of Allah so that Allah will love you. And how important is that? Let me give you an example of that. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he told us something amazing. He said, there is going to be shade on a day when there's no shade at all, there will be shade for some people. And who are these seven people that are promised shade? One of them is somebody who loves for the sake of Allah. Now, what day is that going to be? Well, that's judgment day, of course. On the day of judgment, the sun is going to be brought down close. How close? It says in the Hadith that it's so close that you will be standing in your own perspiration, standing in your own sweat. It will be so hot. You'll be like burning up and no relief for anybody. Except for who? Except for those that are in the shade of Allah. And one of those is somebody he loved for the sake of Allah. So that's a an important consideration immediately. And then another thing is that when a person loves for the sake of Allah, it's easier in this life to deal with some of the problems that come up. For instance, I give an example. Suppose that you're going to the store in the car and you're going to pull into a parking space 
and you stop because some lady or somebody's passing in front of you, you know, you wait patiently and you're going to turn into your space, but somebody comes racing up and jumps into that space and takes your parking space. What do you do? Now, you said, I have to love this person? How am I going to love this person? He just took my parking space. And now I have to park all the way over there. I've got to walk all the way across this. And But then you see the person get out of the car. Oh, it's somebody you know them. And you think, mm. but you know what? I love them for the sake of Allah. So I'm not going to get upset. I'm not going to get angry. I'm just going to go to the other place. I'll park and I'll walk in and I'll say, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Praise to Allah. Because of this love, that I have for the person, even though they took my parking space, even though they did something that upset me, but still what? Alhamdulillah. It's okay. I love that person for the sake of Allah. I don't love what they did. Allah doesn't ask you to love everything people do, but you love the person for the sake of Allah. And so what? So when you love them, you'll forgive them, won't you? And this works again with the maghfir of Allah. Allah's forgiveness, and he, he is not just a forgiver. Allah is forgiving. Just as we said loving, he's forgiving. And you put that together and you think about it. You love somebody for the sake of Allah, so you do what? You forgive them. So then Allah, he forgives you. Allah is loving, Allah is forgiving. He's forgiving you, forgiving us. Because when you forgive somebody else, then Allah, he forgives you. This is a very important consideration. In the Old Testament of the Bible, we find this eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth and vengeance is mine and I take my pound of flesh and I want to get back what you know was taken from me. Islam offers the same consideration. It's not something new. As a matter of fact, this is well known. Well known. But look what happens in Islam. You can take your rights or you can forgive. And if you forgive, that's better for you. Because when you forgive, Allah loves it. Because He's the loving and He forgives you. And this is something all of us are looking for. We're all looking to be forgiven. I want to be forgiven. You want to be forgiven. Everybody who's working on this project with us right now, all of us working here right this minute, all of us want to be forgiven. We want Allah to love us. So we love for the sake of Allah. This is a very beautiful thing. And remember too, that one day you'll die. Allah says, Kulu nafsan da'ikatumot. All of us will die. And when we do, who are the people that will take us to the grave? Who are the people who will bury us? And who are the people who will pray for us and encourage us to say the words, La ilaha illallah? It'll be the same people that are right here with us right now that we do love for the sake of Allah. This is one of the beauties of Islam. Be sure and check our website, Beauties of Islam, for more programs like this. And until next time, salam, peace. Islam is peace, Islam is ease, Islam is not danger or disease, Islam is love and prosperity, Islam is not hatred or adversity, Islam is neither maze nor grace, Islam is giving Allah praise, Islam is keeping up the pace, Islam is for every race, Islam is peace, Islam is ease, Islam is not danger or disease, Islam is love and prosperity. Islam is not hatred or adversity. Islam is neither maze nor grace. Islam is giving.